people who discovered a secret room in their house, tell us what you think it's for and what did you discover inside of it. Story 1. It was about a year into owning our home. We actually found two secret rooms. One was just a room under the stairs that was closed off, had some toys from the 70s in it. The really crazy one is when we redid our attic in the insulation. One of the workers asked if I knew there was a room up there. I had no idea. So we cut open the drywall and there were stacks on stacks of boxes from the 60s. Like tons of boxes. And they were all full. So I opened them up expecting to see some cool stuff and, well, they were full of freaking pine cones. One of the biggest debummers of my life. Story 2. In my house, there was an upstairs bedroom that was made into a game room for me and my sister. When we were about 12 years of age, we realized that a section of the paneling came off and there was a small closet-sized room behind it. We kept it a secret so that when friends came over, we would have the ultimate hiding spot for hide-and-seek. A few years later, we were talking to our parents about what we found, and they said that the house was built during Prohibition era. So, that's most likely what it was used for. A place to hide alcohol. Story 3. A couple years ago, I rented an apartment that was massively old architecture-style building. No idea how old it was. I remember when I did the showing, they showed me a door that had an elaborate staircase that went straight up to the ceiling and explained that it went to the attic, which was sealed up. When I finally was moving out of curiosity, it got the best of me, and I pushed on the panel at the top of the stairs until it popped open and hoisted myself up. It was completely dark and the floor was covered in at least an inch of dust. And I found that it was an entire extra floor in my unit. There was some old, rotting furniture in magazines littered throughout the rooms. I eventually found a small hole in one of the walls that went into the sealed-off upstairs of the unit next to mine, and decided to go through that one too. Well, I found a smaller hole at the back end of the area that led to the next one. I eventually made my way through about five or six of these sealed-off spaces that had no entrances save these small holes in the drywall. The further I went down, the older the furniture I found. Fridges from the 50s or earlier. Old dishware and so much dust over everything. The last unit was the most interesting. Hand-painted scenes on the walls and holes to the attic letting sunlight stream through. I took small videos, but they're all on Snapchat, so they're hard to post. I must have been up there for hours just exploring alone in the dark. I was pretty lucky to have the only room with access to the top. Story 4. My old house had this weirdly large concrete slab in the corner of the yard that was covered by a ton of leaves when we moved in. I thought it was maybe foundation for a shed, but it was in a very odd location. Years later, when I was getting ready to move, it bugged me that I didn't know what it was for. I got a friend to help me dig around it, expecting to confirm that it was just an old foundation. We dug for days in the middle of August. We had to start digging at night just to protect ourselves from the heat. We get about 15 feet down, and concrete wasn't showing any signs of ending. We eventually struck a pipe with a nozzle, and discovered that there was more concrete moving towards the center of the yard. About a week later, my dad came home and almost had a stroke, when he saw that we were digging up half the yard. We had sold the house, and we were expected to leave by September 1st, so... He made us fill it all in, and I left home never finding out what it was. Some of my teachers, though, who have been longtime town residents, told me that my neighborhood had been farmland before development, and that there may have been several bomb or fallout shelters in the area. I would have loved to have found an entrance into the bunker, if that's what it was. Story 5. Back in college... Some friends and I rented an old mansion that had been built in the early 20s from an elderly lady. 
The place was falling apart, but it was huge and rent was dirt cheap. About two years into living there, I went to the basement to do some laundry and momentarily lost my balance reaching out to steady myself using one of the wall panels. It flexed way more than I expected, and after some further more inspection, I found it was removable. Behind it was a small, mostly empty, very directly concrete room, about 100 square feet. I say mostly empty because right in the middle there was a hole the size of a well that had been previously bricked up. It must have been old because the bricks have eroded at some point and exposed some of the hole. Maybe a two-foot diameter circle out of the full five feet. After calling my friends down to take a look at it, I got the courage to creep a little closer to peer down into it. There was another room roughly the same size but deep. Maybe 15 feet down. Mostly dirt, it looked like. We shined a flashlight down into it and I could swear there was a teddy bear at the bottom. Unfortunately, despite plenty of bargaining, none of us were even able to work up the courage, uh, even with some liquid, to tie a rope and climb down for a closer inspection. Especially after we noticed that the bricks which I thought had fallen in were all accounted for, scattered around the holes as if something had broken out. At the risk of my account being discovered by my friends, this was in Pittsburgh. We did a little research and, well, think the sub-basement may have been related to Prohibition. But honestly, I'm just willing to accept that explanation in order to avoid a lifelong nightmare. Story 6. We bought a house that was built in the 1880s. Living in it for seven years and there had to have some wiring work done. The electrician was working down in the basement and wanted to drill through a brick wall to the outside for some reason I no longer remember. We give him the okay and go about our business. He starts drilling, then stops, comes upstairs and tells us he just found a bricked up room and, well, what do we want to do about it? Well, we kind of still want our wiring situation taken care of, but if there's a body and some, well, other stuff in there, I definitely want to know. On the other hand, I don't want to let my sister's boyfriend knock the wall down with a sledgehammer as we were discussing this. The electrician offers to run a scope through the hole as he drills it so we can take a look without doing more damage. Or, as he put it, destroying evidence. So, our new friend gets his scope set up and we all go down to the basement to watch the monitor. We find out it's a very small space. Maybe three feet by five feet, nothing in there but a really old, gross-looking plushie. Not a teddy bear. Maybe a dog. It was sewed out of some kind of patterned fabric in vaguely dog-like shape. That's it. Nothing else. Electrician asks us what he wants to do. I ask if he can just seal the hole he just drilled, because this is definitely how ghost movie starts. Huh. He agreed and patched it up and did drill somewhere else, finished the rewiring, and we all continued on with our lives. Uh, we moved out two years later, and as far as I know, Haunted Doggy is still bricked up in the basement. Story 7. My parents bought a house from an old family member to help her pay for her nursing home care. She hadn't lived in the home for years at this point. She was what you would consider a hoarder, and we were tasked with cleaning up her house, of course, for a summer in order to make it livable prior to the start of school. Rat carcasses fused to the carpet. Old tax documents from the 60s. Well, we were scraping up everything we could find, especially the disgusting tiles covered by the original hardwood floor, disappointingly enough. In a side room, when I made the joke about the previous residents being a secret mass murderer and that there was a trap door under the linoleum full of dead bodies... I pulled up a huge section of tiling, only to find a trap door underneath. I'll be honest with you, it scared the crap out of me, but when we finally built up enough courage to open the darn thing, we discovered there was nothing there. 
It was a walled-off section of the basement with a dirt floor. We suspect it was an old root cellar from back when farmers had to store their crap in a cold, dark place to prevent it from spoiling. Story 8 Growing up, my dad's hoarding was pretty bad, and my childhood home was pretty old. Around my preteens, I started trying to navigate through the clutters to the parts of the house I truly have never seen because of all the junk. I found this door that's been blocked off, and I eventually moved stuff around enough that I could open the door, which was hard because the room was big, but he filled it so much to the way it's hard to navigate in a single path. Behind the door was trippy to me as a kid because the back couple of rooms of the house were rotted out and collapsed in places, so my parents just blocked it off, I guess. Going from my packed house to this completely empty, collapsing ruins was actually really interesting to me at the time. I used to try and navigate through it till one day I fell through the floor and landed underneath the house with my head just a couple inches from a nail pointed up from the ground. I don't remember if I ever went back through the door after that. Story 9 My grandma's house, well, it's 244 years old. I think I was about 12 before I realized that there was an extra window between the kitchen and what was at the time the living room, but has since resumed service as the dining room. Logically, it didn't make any sense. I knew there was a butler's pantry between those two rooms, but I knew there was no window in it. I went climbing through the huge old bushes under, almost over, the window, and eventually found an overgrown door. It was like that part in the secret garden where Mary finds the door in the ivy, it wasn't opening, and I was too little to look into the window. Unlike in the book, a little bird never showed me where the key was buried, unfortunately. <laughs> I kind of forget about it. Figured it was just as forbidden as the third floor slash attic. Which I was fine with, because the attic was where the Shadow Man lived. But that's a whole nother story. Until a few years back, when my aunt uploaded an album to Facebook. It was part I lost count of now abandoned projects to renovate the old family homestead. The workers had cleared the jungle that was back of the house and gotten the door off the hinges. It was actually nothing. Just a little storage extra space that had been cleaned out decades prior. But she also posted some history. The house used to have an annex, dates unknown, making it into a T. There's absolutely no known pictures of that annex, which hurts. My aunt, who has a familial interest in history, said she thought the window must have been original to the house, and that the shed was basically empty space left over after the annex was eventually demolished. If anyone's interested, I'll try to find a picture of the home. I love that place. She used to have a known collection of history, which I've seen with my own eyes, but no one knows where it is. I'll have to copy that online the minute I next get my hands on it. Story 10. After 15 years, we found a second basement in our farmhouse. My father had removed one of the large rocks that made up the basement wall. I crawled under the log frame a few feet and there was a wall made of baseball-sized rocks. I knocked these down and entered an old root cellar. There were shelves, shattered mason jars... And bones. Lots and lots of bones. We dug a tunnel so we could access the room. Found many secret areas in my current house behind wood panels. First secret door was in the basement. It led to an underground bomb shelter with a separate air intake and water line. I knew of it prior to buying the home and was a major selling point for me. Stocked with a radiation detector used for storage... And, well, the second room was only three feet high. Had a light of a bunch of toys showing crayons and drawings. That one I didn't find for a few months. After about two weeks, I discovered a few hidden panels with shelves and toys, magazines, books, and some clothing. Nothing really too interesting. After a year or two, I located a suspicious wooden panel on the floor, pried it open a bit, and was able to see a full-length staircase leading to a brick wall. Well, 
I haven't bothered to fully open that panel yet. Story 11. Ah, the story of the murder room. I grew up in an old farmhouse, two floors and a basement. The basement was creepy as hell, anyways, because it had rickety wood slat stairs, stone walls, and was dimly lit in an L shape with dark corners. And had I crap you not, a single hanging light bulb around one of the corners. Oh, and spiders! So many spiders and cobwebs. And these spiders turn some bright white when they die for some gosh forsaken reason. Anyways, at the back of the basement, it always seemed cut short. So one day, brother and I decide to search under an old back porch that was overgrown with weeds at the time. We found a door to another room that had been walled off from the rest of the basement. Well, door is probably an overstatement. It was kind of a hanging half-door made with weathered 2x4s with big metal hinges. It wouldn't move when we tried to open it, so for years we jokingly referred to it as the murder room. We would dare friends to go inside, which <laughs> no one would, of course, and the legend grew. What could be in this room if it was for storage? Why would it be walled off from the rest of the basement? Eventually, we could lift the door ever so slightly, but it was pitch black dark inside. And would my big brother push me in one day, our mom would end up telling us to stop messing around back there. That that old door was dangerous if it swung down on us, and she didn't want us playing back there anymore. Of course, well, <laughs> this only grew my interest, but it did freak us out. I'd made a discovery while inside even though I couldn't see. The floor was made of dirt. What's going on? One day, our mom had the old carpets thrown out and finally fixed the wooden floors under them like she always wanted to. Eventually, when cleaning out a tiny closet under some stairs, I noticed that some of the boards made a distinctive square. It's right over the murder room. I pulled up the square and saw the same dirt floor. I felt years before, my girlfriend and I ventured inside and found a small chair and a child's school desk. Take it as you will, <laughs> but it freaked us out. Later, I found out many buildings in our town were linked to the Underground Railroad. Take it as you will, but that was the story of the murder room.